Assalamu alaikum children. Welcome to the science class for the grade 4. This is lesson number 6, Plants Living and Surviving, part 3. In the previous two videos, we have studied about the natural habitat as terrestrial habitat and aquatic habitat. And we have also seen in detail uh, the plants grow in plains, plants grow in rainforest, in the coastal areas and in the mountains. Okay. And uh, the desert vegetation also we have seen in detail. So today uh, we will study in detail about aquatic plants. So what are aquatic plants? The plants found in aquatic habitats such as ponds, lakes, rivers and seas are called aquatic plants. So in the terrestrial habitat we have seen that the plants which grow on the land forms like plains or in the rainforest or desert or mountains so wherever the land the plants which grows on the land they are terrestrial plants and the plants which grow in water uh, such as ponds lakes rivers and seas these plants are called aquatic plants here you can see the example uh, water lily lotus hyacinth duckweed and pondweed are the examples aquatic plants are of three types there are three types of aquatic plant they are fixed plants floating plants and underwater plants okay first we will see fixed plants these plants are fixed to the bed of the palm their stem is light and hollow the broad leaves float on the water so the underside of the leaves is mostly submerged in water so they have stomata on the upper surface so they breathe through this stomata lotus and water lily are examples of fixed aquatic plants next is Floating plants, some aquatic plants float in water, they have spongy swollen parts, duckweed and water hyacinth are two examples, this is duckweed and this is water hyacinth, they are examples of floating plant and for fixed plant we have seen the example, so lotus and water lily. So next is underwater plants. Plants that grow underwater have leaves that are narrow and long. Their body is flexible so that they can move with the water currents. They do not have stomata to help them breathe. They breathe through air spaces in their stem. In their stem, air spaces are present. They breathe through it. Underwater plants keep the pond clean. Examples of underwater plants are tape grass and pond weed. So these are the examples. So now we will see some interesting plants here are some insectivorous plants what is the meaning of insect insectivorous the insect eating plants are called insectivorous plants is it not amazing children so see how does it happen have you heard about plants eating insects you, you have studied in the previous lessons that plants prefer, prepare their own food green plants prepare their own food and they store it in the form of starch and all. So, uh, some plants such as Venus flytrap and pitcher plant, th these types of plant, they eat insects. So, how can they eat insects? They usually grow in areas where soil has insufficient nutrients. So, they prepare food for themselves, but this so, uh, the soil in which they grow, it will be having insufficient nutrients. So, the food needs of these plants cannot be fulfilled by the food which, which they prepare by themselves. So, they need to get some extra food. So, they take in the form of insects. So, the plants get these nutrients by trapping and consuming insects. When an insect sits on the Venus flytrap, so this is the Venus flytrap plant. So its structure of leaf is like uh, it is giving a gap, it is giving a space to sit the insects. When insects enter into this, it closes like a comb and trap it. The sensitive pair of leaves snap shut, it will close. The insect gets trapped inside the leaves, then it will be digested, uh, it will be absorbed by the parts of the leaves which will be having one some sticky substance in that okay understood uh, in the same way in the pitcher plant also uh, the leaves will be modified into like a pitcher jug okay so in this when the insects uh, enters into this jug type structure uh, it lid will be closed then it also traps that insect and absorb it so this is how they fulfill the uh, needs of the nutrients uh, which they lack from the soil which in which they grow okay uh, here are 
parasitic plants parasitic means actually the depending on others okay parasite means depending on others for the food some plants steal food from other plants and are called parasitic plant so some plants are dependent on other plants for their food for example uh, the mist lito okay what is the name of the plant example the mist lito is a green parasite with green leaves it has chlorophyll and can make its own food however it gets water and minerals from the host the dodder is a total parasite and its leaves are reduced to brown scales it contains no chlorophyll and absorb all its food from a host plant so when uh, main plant will be there which prepares food, food and the host the um, parasitic plant which is not having sufficient food so it will be dependent on the other plant that is host plant okay here dodder is total parasite and this it is dependent on other tree for their food that's why it is called parasitic plant okay so here our lesson completed there are some textbook exercises and uh, notes also i am forwarding all of you complete your notes in this lesson you have studied about the habitat first habitat is the place where uh, the plants grow so the naturally the plants grow uh, at which place that place is called natural habitat so this natural habitat can be divided into two types terrestrial habitat and aquatic habitat terrestrial habitat means the plants which grow on land in the land forms the plains deserts mountains um, and uh, what evergreen trees deciduous trees in rain forest these all comes under uh, terrestrial habitat means the plants which grow on land it comes under terrestrial habitat and the plants which grow in the water they comes under aquatic plants lakes ponds seas and water bodies are uh, the plants which grow in it they are the examples here mountain plants also we have seen the plants which grow on the mountain in that we have seen fir spruce uh, cedar okay and uh, we have also seen the desert plants cactus you know uh, which will be in this leaves will be modified into into the thorns uh, to fulfill the needs of water the the roots grow very deeply in the earth in search of water so these all adaptations and the types we have seen adaptation means the changes uh, the plant which make in itself to survive in the surrounding so that is adaptation so plants that grow in marshy areas we have seen examples the breathing roots of mangrove mangrove trees then coconut trees are the examples of coastal areas and in aquatic plants we have seen fixed plant floating plants and underwater plants and we have also seen some interesting plants like insectivorous plants insect eating plants examples venus fly trap and pitcher plant and the parasitic plants we have seen dodder plant and mistletoe plant okay mistletoe plants so here are textbook exercises Uh, name the habitat of each of the following plants habitat means the place where it grows so cactus here is example is cactus its habitat is desert pine fir they grows in the mountains then date palm it grows in desert lotus grows in water coconut coastal areas and mangrove grows in marshy areas and here are choose the correct answers go through it and uh, mark the correct answers in your textbooks which of the following are the natural habitats of cactus yes answer is desert most trees in the hills have conical crowns in a lotus lotus plants tomato are present on the upper surface just now we have studied the leaves of desert plants are small to prevent water loss mangrove trees have dash roots they are they have breathing roots okay children that's it for today's video we have completed our lesson number 6 inshallah next week we will start lesson number 7 so uh, till then you complete your notes and complete your textbook exercises okay take care of yourself allah hafiz